Hello, my friends, Leo Babauta of Zen Habits here. And in this video, I'm going to talk about simplifying your life and why to simplify and a simple approach to simplifying. We're going to talk about some tips for simplifying. So buckle in. This is going to be a fun video about simplicity. Um, before I dive into it, really want to ask you to leave me a comment and suggest a topic for a video. I have loved the topics that everyone's been suggesting so far, and I look at every single comment, and uh, I am taking your suggestions seriously. It really helps me when you can tell me what you want to hear. So if there's something about simplicity you'd like to hear about, let me know. So simplifying your life. Well, first of all, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> it can mean a lot of different things, and it's not a new idea. It goes back to ancient times. Uh, from the Greeks to, you know, um, Indian traditions to uh, Taoism and Zen and, you know, lots of others. So there's, there's a, a real rich tradition in every part of the world, actually, about simplicity and living a simple life. And what happens is that people realize that life can get really overloaded and complicated and we can put unnecessary expectations on our lives, uh, which leads to discontentment and unhappiness with ourselves, with our lives. And that, you know, in the modern world, what we realize is that we're working and working and working for, you know, consumerism to like try and buy all the things that we're supposed to be buying and living a life full of stuff that's really expensive and that requires us to basically be a slave to making some money to pay for all of it. And so uh, simplicity, which has been called at different points like voluntary simplicity or living the simple life or minimalism, which I'm gonna talk about minimalism in another video. But simplicity is kind of an antidote to our society the way that we are structured. And this has always been the case. Simplicity back in the ancient days was a antidote to the society that they had then, to their complexities. But today, it often can feel to us in the modern world that things are more complex than ever before. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but it freaking feels that way, right? And so living a simple life today is, is complicated. Like, can we live without a cell phone, for example? Can we live without technology? Should we? Like, is that even something that we should be shooting for? Um, can we live without Amazon or, you know, buying things online? Can we live without, you know, processed foods or um, modern houses? And is that even something that we would want to do, if we, even if we could? There's no simple answers to these questions. So what I want to do is to go below the layer of like how to do it and should I be giving up my cell phone down to a, a lower, more fundamental level, which is what does it mean to live a happy life? And I think that the answer that we've been given isn't always satisfactory to a lot of us. So the answer is I'm going to buy a lot of stuff. I'm going to watch, consume a lot of content. I'm going to and do exactly what everybody else in the society does is get a big house and a big car, maybe two or three big cars, um, you know, spend as much as possible, spend as much as I have the money for, maybe more, get into debt. That's an unsatisfying answer to living a good life. Yes, you'd be living a life that your neighbors are living, that your family are, are living, but is it really satisfying? Another part of the answer that society has given us is not only are we going to you know, consume a lot of stuff online or watch a lot of TV, a lot of consumption, but it's consumption of food as well. I'm eating junk food. I'm eating fast food. Um, I'm eating to comfort myself and, and manage my emotions. So food is one answer to it. And it's like we can't really live without food, but also we can't even imagine living without the food that we are, that, that's really pleasurable. When I ask, you know, ask people like, would you be willing to go without fast food, burgers and fries and, you know, Coke? You know, sometimes the answer is like, I can't even imagine it. 
So I'm not judging these people. I'm just noting that that's what our lives have become. That's the answer to what's a happy life. And I would say, in my experience, that that actually doesn't lead to happiness for a lot of people. It doesn't lead to meaning. It's consumption for consumption's sake, because this is the only thing that we know to do. But it also has its downsides as well, which is that it leads to a life that is overloaded with stuff. We become overloaded with calories and we become heavier and heavier and unhealthier and unhealthier and develop all kinds of diseases of consumption like diabetes and heart disease and cancer. Um, we get overloaded in terms of finances, in terms of debt that we take on. This is very, very common, not having enough money. And I'm not blaming the poor. This is a problem of our society that we have given this as the answer to what it means to live a good life. And I don't actually think it does. So a simple life is to say like, huh, I'm going to question all of that and find out what really makes me happy. And what I would say is spending money does not equal happiness. It's a very like trite kind of thing, but, but yet we still do it. I would also say consuming doesn't make us happy. What does make us happy? Well, there are things that are often free or cheap and don't require a lot of stuff. So for example, I like going outside. Nature, you know, not everyone has access, it, access to it, so I get that that's a privilege, but if you can go out into nature, it doesn't cost a lot. You can just go out for a walk, sit out in some trees or by the ocean, or whatever it is, a lake, a river, um, look out at the stars, watch a sunset. It's cheap. And this is simplicity. Now, of course, that's not, you know, the only thing. Reading a book is a simple and cheap thing. You don't even have to buy a lot of, you know, if you're ordering, you're like, oh, I heard that Leo said, reading a book makes me happy. I'm going to go and order 20 books on Amazon. No, go on, go to your library, sign up for a library card, Use the Libby app and download free ebooks and audiobooks. You know, there's free stuff. There's free stuff online as well. So it doesn't have to cost a lot to read a book. You know, listen to an audiobook. Um, that, you know, writing, you could journal, you can write, make art. These things don't have to cost a lot. Like maybe you need, you know, a pen and paper or some paints. Sure. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot, though. You don't have to get the finest and most abundant amount of art supplies. Spending time with other people who you care about. Maybe you're lonely and you're consuming a lot, but you're not actually connecting with people. You know, it requires you to face some discomfort, which simplicity does. Simplicity requires you to face some discomfort because you're giving up something that you're used to. Eating simple, healthy foods. I like whole foods. Now, do I enjoy French fries and a burger, a veggie burger in my case, since I'm vegan, uh, but, and, you know, a beer? Sure, of course, those are delicious things. But I can also be really happy with black beans and rice and some veggies. Um, I, I will eat, often eat a dish full of lentils and kale, some olive oil and some, you know, spices. Uh, these are whole foods, and they're very simple, and I love them. Uh, lately, I've been eating oats with with a banana and some raisins and some cinnamon. Really simple to make, super cheap. Oats are one of the cheapest things you can buy. So are black beans, especially if you buy them, and lentils, if you buy them dry and cook them in an instant pot. Um, brown rice is super cheap and simple as well, and so like, you know, these are easy things. I buy cheap vegetables, cheap uh, fruits, and it's it's frugal, and yet it's simple, and it's delicious. You can make it taste good with a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper and other fun things. So simple food, spending time with others, you don't have to spend a lot. I would say another thing that's really interesting is we don't need alcohol or drugs to uh, have a good life. And so I'm not saying you should never drink you know, a beer or a glass of wet, red wine, like I do. I have a cocktail now and then. But letting go of that, you know, you actually can enjoy life more. You're not, you know, alcohol is a depressant. It actually, it's supposed to like relax us, but it also just makes us feel 
down, uh, especially if we imbibe in it regularly. And so you can let go of some of that. Save a lot of money. You can socialize with other people in a different way. Go, you know, go outdoors and go for a hike with them. Um, so, and what you can see if you start to reject these things is that we're going to be swimming against society's norms. And what that means is we have to be able to confront something that's uncomfortable, which is not everyone's going to be on board with this. You have to be a little bit weird. Um, if you decide to not live in a big house, not drive a big car or even have a car at all. We went for a while, years without any car at all. Um, I actually want to go back to that. I miss those days. So these are, these are possibilities, but they mean that you're bucking the trend of society. So I'm not saying you need to do any of these things that I'm saying. I'm saying, look at what makes you happy. And the things that I've mentioned are actually fairly cheap things that don't cost a lot. They don't require you to like buy a lot of things. And yet they can give you happiness. There's others as well. Just really appreciating what's in front of you, feeling wonder at the world around you. Our brains shut down our wonder, but what if we could reconnect to that sense of wonder, feeling love and compassion, going out and doing some volunteer work. These are all things that can feel meaningful and amazing. Um, doing things, you know, what other things feel like you're being of service to others? Um, doing something with a sense of purpose and intention. These are different places to look. And what you can see is that they don't cost a lot. It's not hard uh, or not hard. It's not expensive and complicated to serve others. You can do it in a very simple way. So look at how can I do things in a, in a simple a way as possible. I'm not saying you have to live without a cell phone, but can you be less addicted to your phone? Put it down for a little while and do other things. Can you have a break from technology? Can you have a break from spending, shopping? Can you go like a month without shopping? These are ways to simplify. And as you do this, you can also get rid of stuff. All this excess stuff start to slowly pare your life down so that you can give these away to other people who might need them, but realize you don't need all of this stuff. Your life becomes simpler and simpler. You can also simplify your time, do less, be committed to less, and create more spaciousness in your day. So these are some ways to simplify. We can go into more specifics. If you give me a question like, how do I simplify this? That will actually make this a richer topic, but I wanted to start this video with an idea of what is a simple life? What does that mean? And how do we start to, to move in that direction? Okay, that's all I've got for you today. If you like this video, please do subscribe, uh, like the video as well, share it with other people and encourage them to live a simple life. Anyone who you think could use more Zen habits in your life, send this video to them. It would really help me out. Thanks my friends, I'll talk to you later.